Thank you. I'm pleased to be here. First, that's a warm welcome. I'm going to launch right into a sales pitch. How would you like to live in a house that costs $300 a year to heat? I'll repeat, $300 a year, not per month, for all your heating. Better yet, how about a house that costs zero for all of your energy in a year? It sounds a little far-fetched, I know, but it's happening. What that means that takes us to the definition of a zero energy home, or net zero. It means a house that produces as much as it consumes, a house that sells as much energy as it buys. And on the end of the year, it's netted out to zero. In Nova Scotia, that's maybe a bit of a challenge because we've got, obviously, a bit of a higher energy demand in wintertime. So Nova Scotia House, what they would do is use that energy, you need it, and then in the summertime, you produce excess energy. So at the end of the year, it all balances out and you pay nothing. I'm going to show you how to get there. But first, I've got a question. Raise your hand if you live in a house that has a toilet. I think I see 100%. I hope it's 100%. <laughs> how about the next question? Um, how many of you are, are in a house where your primary energy is from burning coal or wood? I've got a couple of those, and that's okay. But if I had asked that question in 1941, almost half of you would have said you had no toilet. And 93% of you would have said that your primary heat source, and maybe your sole heat source, was from wood or coal. So how did we get from 1941 to now, where we're talking about having houses that have zero energy? Well, I'm going to have to do a little bit of a romp through the history of, 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 in a few decades here. Um, 1940s, the primary driver was the World War, World War II. Actually, it was the end of the World War II, um, where we had soldiers returning home in need of housing. The Canada, or the Central Mortgage and Housing Corporation, CMHC, was established to help house returning soldiers. 1950s and 60s, houses were becoming more affordable, mortgages easier, easier to get, there's rapid urbanization, there was um, uh, improved techniques. So we had people coming to suburbs, building houses, coming to the cities, building in apartments, every one of them with a toilet. Um, we also had new techniques that were now building houses faster than we ever had before with fewer, uh, with fewer labor, with less labor. So uh, the interesting thing there is energy was still cheap. So there was little discussion, little thought given to insulation at all, much less talking about zero energy. So that takes us now to the 1970s. Now we've got a different thing happening. We've got the energy crisis. Two of these images are landmarks in the design industry. In fact, perhaps all three of them are, but I'm going to talk about two of them. The house in the top, the PEI arc, built in Prince Edward Island, was done not only to address the energy crisis of the 70s, it did deal with energy, it collected and stored energy, but also dealt with producing food within the own house uh, and dealing with waste within, its, within the house itself. So it was an idea really about sustainable living. The house on the bottom, the Saskatchewan Conservation House, was designed and built by engineers in Saskatchewan, the research council there. And they were really concerned about conservation. What can we do to minimize the amount of energy we use in a house? Both of these houses are landmarks, as I say, in the design, in the, in the housing world. Um, neither of them, though, are still, are yet talking about zero energy. They've conserved energy. They've done a really good job at that. But they don't have an easy ability to produce energy. The background to all of this is the price of oil. There's a chart that goes from 1970 up to today. It's showing in 2018 dollars that the price of oil in 1970 was about $20 a barrel. In fact, for the two decades before that, it was about $20 a barrel. We didn't really care about how much energy we used. Then in 1973, the oil embargo and the oil crisis, energy crisis, the price of oil doubled. All of a sudden, we see great interest. So we see the PEI arc, the Saskatchewan Conservation House, energy policies. The Canadian Home Builders Association, which is a widely adopted, regarded organization, has established a program called the R2000 Energy Efficient House. It's a program that's still available today. I'm not going to make you read all of this stuff. This is just to show a trend that after the 1980s, or the beginning of the 1980s, energy prices went down. And what did the housing industry respond with? Cricket chirping, basically. 
Almost nothing happened for almost 25 years. There's a little smattering. There's interest in environmental um, uh, design in homes. So there were a few initiatives. I can't say nothing was happening. But then when we get to the 2000s again, early 2000s, my theory was that when the price of oil was below $50 a barrel, we really didn't care. But we get to the 2000s, we've got oil prices going back up again, as well as now irrefutable client science says we've got global warming and climate change. So that led to an explosion of interest in not only green building, but energy and talk about net zero energy. So there's policies, incentives, organizations, hundreds of them now in the latter part of the 2000s and into the, into the tens that are interested in net zero energy. How did the auto industry respond to the same thing? Well, you can see right there. In fact, a car in 2005 used more gas than a car from 1985. That seems crazy. And it's not because we're making worse engines. It's because we're putting in more horsepower. We wanted the fast cars. And the car buffs would know the rise of the Camaro, the GT, the Shelby, the Mustang, all these cars that came back in the 80s because we wanted to be fast car nation. Now, the Central Mortgage and Housing Corporation, now called the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, still CMHC, did a demonstration in the mid-2000s. Uh, so a set of houses came out in 2007 where they wanted, they specifically said, let's try to do net zero houses. And they did it with different technologies. They did it in different parts of the, of the country. They did it in different house styles, different housing types. And they did really well. They're now producing energy. Not all successful, most of them had really low energy, some near zero energy, some net zero energy, but we learned a lot from them. Now, 10 years later, what does Solterre do? We use a philosophy called shape, study, and share. Shaping is really the first step is that you have to have a goal. You have to have a quantifiable target. In this case, net zero. Um, Yogi Berra said, it has stated, if you don't know where you're going, you might end up somewhere else. And that's the case in any industry. Um, every house is unique, every site is unique. So we look at the site, we look at the slopes, we look at the availability of sun, we look at the vegetation, the wind patterns, the views. But most importantly, we encourage people to build better, not bigger. So every square foot of house that you don't build is money that you save. But it's also a square foot that you don't have to heat, you don't have to maintain, and you don't have to clean. Next, we look at studying. So you have your designs and you look at modeling iterations. This is an energy model that determines whether or not you're getting towards your target or not. And in this case, the net zero. Um, so you look at how much insulation. And usually it's a lot of insulation. You look at putting in really good windows. You look at where the windows are going to be, what their direction they're facing, where is the sun, how are they going to react with energy. All of these things um, interact with the heating systems, cooling systems, your lighting. So when you look at all of this and model it and go through iterations, you can get your energy load down by about 80%. So that's to a point that we call net zero ready. So you've only got a little bit now that you have to do to get to that net zero. So you apply renewable energy technologies at, at that point. And it's usually something that produces electricity. It's a wind turbine, it's solar electric panels, or it might be a, a, a water turbine. And then finally, we have to share. We monitor results. We know whether we're achieving it or not. We can also demonstrate what's working and what's not working. Um, and you share case studies. You share examples, details. You show people what's working. Here are some examples. Um, so these are houses that are uh, designed to a, an energy standard called Passive House. And passive House itself looks back at the Saskatchewan Conservation Houses, its inspiration. German energy standard that aims for 80% for, um, uh, energy reduction targets. So uh, we've also got a net zero house here, a house that achieves that a passive house standard and then uses a little bit of solar electric panels to net out to zero. We've got a, a house that's off grid. And by its very nature, it has to produce all the energy that it uses. And another house uh, in the lower right corner is from Edmonton. So our most northerly capital, where you'd think is cold, and dark, and you're right, it is. It's still doing near zero and net zero houses there. What's common with all of these is they've got lots of insulation, they've got lots of good windows, they're bright, they're light, they're comfortable, they're warm, they're quiet, 
They all have toilets. And by the way, they all cost almost nothing for their energy. So what we've learned is that the trend is to do a house like this to get a net zero ready house, to get 80% reduction, costs about $20,000 for an average new house. If you finance that on a mortgage, that costs very roughly $1,000 a year. Your energy savings, $2,000 a year. So the return on investment out of this is immediate. You start saving money right from year one. So why isn't everybody doing this? That's a really good question. I have a theory. People are resistant to change. They're afraid of failure. Well, we're in a world of quick, fast technological change. We have to allow people to not be afraid to fail. We have to acknowledge and share risk, as well as the reward. We have to educate homeowners of what's available. We have to educate builders of how to do it. Innovation is done by those that are willing to take risks, like the Saskatchewan Conservation House, like these houses here. And I have to end with a quote from We're Hockey Nation, from Wayne Gretzky. You will always miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Net zero energy housing makes sense, and it can happen. So what do you say? Let's go build something.